With the world changing, farmers are feeling the worst parts of it. Global warming and climate change are forcing farmers to change their plans. Farmers are being forced into more efficient processes and relying on things like soil testing, variable mapping, and even grid sampling. So stay tuned to today's video as we discuss how farmers have turned to soil science technology as soaring fertilizer prices take a hit out of a bumper crop. First up, what exactly is happening with farmers right now? The farming crisis is happening all all over the world right now because of what is happening in Ukraine and because of global warming. Things are in need of a change and Australia are feeling the worst of it. One farmer named Tim McClelland is one of the farmers being forced to change the way he does things as the prices are rising for farming goods. He's now paying around $1,100 for a ton of fertilizer, whereas just a year ago now he was paying $650 less. The rising cost has set a record year for prices and things are still getting worse. Farmers like McClelland have been using soil sampling for years now in order to see how much fertilizer he needs to use on his crops, down to a very specific amount. Now more than ever do farmers like McClelland need to do this as there can be no over fertilizing with the rising prices of it all. Soil sampling tells us how much nitrogen phosphorus we had in our soil at the start of the year, which then makes it easier for us to match our supply to our demand, he said. The biggest cause of import and financial pain for any farmer is always going to be fertilizer. But now more than ever, it's the most expensive thing that they're consistently buying for their crops. One of the leading agricultural analysts in Australia, Andrew Whitelaw, has said that the prices per ton of fertilizer has more than doubled the price from between 2017 and 2020. Farmers are being employed to use less fertilizer to save money, and using soil sampling is the best method for that. According to Cheryl Kalish-Gordon, commodities analyst at Rabobank, Australian farmers use six to seven metric tons of fertilizer per year, with the usage of some fertilizers forecast to increase due to the nation's growing agricultural production. Kalish Gordon said Australia's supply was particularly exposed to the international market with a heavy reliance on foreign importation. Australia imports 100% of its potassium, one of the nutrients in fertilizer, from the US, Canada, and Belarus. But imports from Belarus are currently impossible due to the war in Ukraine. Australia also imports 90 3% of its urea, which primarily comes from Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and China. Kellish Gordon said that this supply is also strained due to China's export bans to secure its domestic supplies. Soil sampling is in place to be able to save fertilizer in combination with the nitrogen bank numbers all farmers use. They are designed to allow a farmer to achieve 80% production potential. The testing hasn't really made too much of a difference to a farmer like McClelland, but it has helped him redistribute some fertilizer fertilizer to an area that needed it more. His farm was using less fertilizer last year as the farmer planted less fertilizer intense plants like lentils. Justin Everett is the chair of the New South Wales Farmers Grains Committee and he expects the use of soil and grid sampling to increase dramatically. He also said that the prices have taken a massive hit, meaning that the savings put away just aren't there. We thought we'd had a pretty good run last year and lo and behold all these high fertilizer prices, high fuel prices, and then high chemical prices have just eaten away at the excess that you probably plan to put away for a drought, he said. Clearly all of these problems are making farming even harder for these farmers than it already was. They were already dealing with fewer yields, more expensive equipment, and of course prices going up for the food they are selling. Farmers all across the globe have to deal with so many issues, and this is just another one added onto the pile. What do you think about all of this? Let us know down in the comments section below. And now, on to some other farming news and information from the last few weeks. Next, what is the deal with regenerative farming? Nutrition is really important when it comes to us eating the right foods, but did you know that changing what the plant itself eats can actually affect how the food tastes for us? This is why regenerative farming needs to be just right as changing how the food tastes too much basically changes the entire food in the first place. A recent study came along and it compared various nutritional contents of of grown crops that were using traditional methods to those using regenerative methods. In their findings, they discovered that these foods grown in regenerative farms contained, on average, more calcium, magnesium, zinc, and potassium, as well as more vitamins. These crops were also much lower in those elements that can impact humans in a bad way, such as sodium, nickel, and cadmium. It was also found that in both beef and pork raised on a regenerative farm, that they had higher levels of omega-3 fats 
and even more health benefits. Clearly, regenerative farming has some really great things and changes the food for the better. But here comes the question, does it change the way it all tastes? From what has been said in studies, it's basically unnoticeable, and no normal person buying something in a supermarket is going to know the difference. This is great news, as the food needs to be the same. In terms of soil, regenerative farms have a much better soil full of carbon. It has more nutrients for the plants and allows a healthier ecosystem to occur and grow. All plants draw things from the soil, and this better soil allows them to get the best nutrients possible. It's all amazing that we can have regenerative farming in the first place, but it's an added bonus that the crops are better off because of it. Over the next decade or so, farming is going to change heavily. More regenerative farming practices are going to be introduced and crops are going to be much better. Better yields are going to occur and crops across the world are just going to be better for us and the animals farmers develop. Farming can get a little boring for the average audience member, but learning more about regenerative farming is just awesome. We're entering a new era of farming and crops in general. There are many problems right now, of course, but it looks like things are looking up for crops. What do you think about all of this, especially the new yields from regenerative farming? Let us know in the comments section below. Finally, spray bots are the future of cutting labor. It looks like now that technology is getting better and better, farming labor is going to be reduced. We can see this already about to take effect in Australia, as these spray bots are cutting costs, labor, and all for an inexpensive price. Here are the key facts that we know right now. New and automated spray bots have already saved farmers hundreds of dollars on labor, chemicals, and of course gasoline. Those who have purchased these bots are already getting 100% of their return inside of two years of having them. And the same manufacturers are predicting that tractors will be automated within 10 years. Things are steadily changing in this industry and it's awesome to see. It's going to save a lot of time, money, and of course increase the yield. Some have stated that they need an employee to keep an eye on the automated spray bots and rigs, but one farmer has done something special. Tom Coggan from Coggan Farms actually controls all of it from his iPad and waits for it to notify him of refills needed for the rigs. He also went on to talk about how the robots are in fact getting the so-called boring job of the farms, which makes a whole lot of sense. His business has also gone up to 90% on chemicals when his paddocks have been clear because they are only sprayed when it noticed a weed and not by a human. These bots are functioning all day for 24 hours and it's an insane thing for these farmers. It saved a lot of time already and could change many farmers lives across the world if they implemented it right now. Sadly, the problem right now is that these are manufactured specifically for your farm, meaning you have to book out a manufacturer specifically for you. Currently, the waiting list is about a year in advance, so farmers really need to get on this right now, otherwise they are waiting even longer for this to change their lives. Let us know down in the comments section below what you think of this new farming tech and how it's going to affect the industry from now on. Let us know what else you know about this if you are interested as well. And that's the end of today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed this latest video. If you did, would you please let us know down below in the comments section. It would be very helpful. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, and of course subscribe to the channel with the notification bell rung. Thanks for watching today's video. Bye!